Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Hola. Hola. We'll get going in just a couple of minutes as everyone sort of trickles into our workshop. Staz, you're wearing a toque. Is it cold today? <laughs> or sorry, is it beanie hat? <laughs> we call it a toque in Canada. <laughs> I've never heard that. Um, yes, my room is very chilly in my house. Yeah. Yes. For all of our American friends, um, a hat in Canada is called a toque, <laughs> if you haven't heard of that already. And I think in Australia, it's called a beanie. So, yeah, that kind of hat. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Emily, how are we doing for numbers? We're at 35, so I think it's safe to get started. Um, we'll just let the fresh trickle in. Sounds good. All right, good morning, everyone. Um, nice to see all of you in 2D. Um, really wish we could be there with you in person. Um, unfortunately, the elephant in the room of COVID-19 has prevented us from doing that, but hopefully one day we will get to meet in person. Um, so, um, we'll do some introductions, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll do some introductions shortly, but for some, those of you who haven't had, uh, who we haven't had the pleasure to engage with yet, wanted to give you a bit of background about, um, our company and our partnership with Travel Oregon and the, um, purpose of today's discussion. So, we are Destination Think, we're a global marketing firm, uh, destination marketing firm, that's been working with DMOs all around the world uh, for about 11 years now. Um, and we have client partnerships in, uh, in Europe and North America. Um, our goal in everything we do um, is essentially this. We bring places closer to people. And how we do this is through highly collaborative processes, um, such as this journey we're taking with Travel Oregon and yourselves. We take this approach um, really in everything we do uh, from strategic planning to marketing and promotion, um, as well as staying ahead of all of those rapid changes in the economy, social, and the environmental landscape. Um, we know it's an ever-changing world, so it's important for us to stay ahead of that. Um, this partnership with Travel Oregon is a great fit as we both believe that travel must lead to a better future and to be able to truly adapt to ongoing crises such as the pandemic and climate change and other socioeconomic uh, changes. Um, so just as you are all here today, we do believe that nothing really works without engaging the people of a place from tourism leaders to residents. And without transformational change can be a challenge. In terms of a bit of a background on uh, this project, um, the focus is really uh, to, uh, uh, the focus we've sort of created with this project with Travel Oregon since um, the beginning of our relationship that started in February is to design a strategic vision and a transformational strategy. And this strategy uh, will help direct not only Travel Oregon, but the state's tourism industry on a really clear path for future-proof tourism. Um, so with this highly collaborative process, we've been engaging with the entire staff at Travel Oregon, with yourselves, um, and Frank will get into that in a minute in terms of the journey we've been on uh, to date. Um, so it's really important we gain all of your perspectives um, and identify that direction and priorities we want to take forward with this transformational strategy. So really with that, the purpose of today um, is really to um, have you all participate in a really great collaborative, really imperative to this process. Uh, we are here to uh, truly co-create the transformational strategy together. Um, and this will help us um, validate the vision, the priorities, the actions, 
for Travel Oregon and the industry. Um, so we can all help you thrive in a very cha uh, ever-changing environment for many years to come. So like I said, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedules to participate today and really look forward to all the great discussion we have ahead. So with that in mind, I wanted to do uh, some quick introductions of our team. So I'm going to pass it over to Frank. Hi, everybody. I'm Frank Kuipers. Um, Kuipers means scooper in English language. I'm dialing in or zooming in from 5,000 miles away from where you are. I'm actually now in the Netherlands um, in a hotel. So if you see a strange guy in pajama or you hear for that. I'm senior strategist at Destination Think, and I'm in the lead for this project. And I hand it over to William. Thanks, Frank. <clears throat> Welcome, everybody. Thanks for uh, joining us today. I'm looking forward to having some great conversations like we've had in other parts of the state. Uh, my name is William Bucker, and I am the chief strategist at Destination Think. Um, I want to recognize that I'm speaking to you from the traditional territories of the Coast Salish people, particularly the Musqueam people, um, and um, also known as Vancouver, British Columbia. Um, the accent you hear is Dutch. That's where I'm originally from, um, but I've been here a while. Um, and I'm going to pass it over to Rebecca. Thanks, William. Um, my name is Rebecca Godfrey. I'm another senior strategist with Destination Think. Uh, and I'm based in Toronto, Ontario in Canada and have been here for a very long time. Um, but I'm speaking to you from the traditional territories of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee and the Wendat peoples and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis. And I'm very excited to be here today to talk to you and, and learn more about the coast. And now I'm going to pass it to Emily. Thanks, Rebecca. Hi, everyone. My name is Emily Neville. I am a project manager here at Destination Think. I am the closest um, to Oregon of the bunch. I'm in Denver, Colorado, and I would like to acknowledge I am speaking to you from the traditional territories of the Ute, Arapaho, Cheyenne, and Sioux. So thank you guys for being here today. We're really excited to talk to you. And I will pass it over to Shannon. Thanks, Emily. And yes, I am Shannon Landreth. I am a client strategist here at Destination Think. I've been working with the team since the beginning of our relationship with Travel Oregon and really um, helping the team been on and Frank will cover that in just a minute. Um, I'd like to uh, acknowledge that I am speaking to you from Stratford, Ontario, so just uh, outside of Toronto where Rebecca is, and I am speaking to you from the territories of Anishinaabe Waki, Adirondack, and the Mississauga territories. And again, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, participate in today's co-creation lab. So before we head in, I wanted to sort of do a quick overview of our agenda today. Uh, in a minute, I will uh, do the fun part of some housekeeping uh, since we are in a virtual environment and want to uh, set the foundation for our um, discussion. And then I'll turn it over to Frank and he's gonna take us on a little bit of a journey on uh, where are we in this process, um, the purpose of today's discussion uh, and other really key valuable insights to set our foundation. We'll then uh, move into our first breakout session and get to know a lot of you and uh, really your aspirations and uh, priorities. We'll come back and do a quick share back and then we'll um, open it up to the homework that we sent over. If you had an opportunity to watch the video and do some homework, thank you so much. If you didn't, no worries. We will uh, set that up and have a really good discussion about the Travel Oregon vision. Um, from there, we'll take a quick break and then uh, the back half of our uh, call will be focused around um, how do we want to attract uh, the visitors to uh, the Oregon coast and to the state, you know, who are those priorities um, for tourism. And then lastly, most importantly, is uh, pulling this all into how do we get there together, how do we bring that vision to life 
and how do we uh, look at prioritizing what is needed for that transformational strategy. Before we leave for the day, we'll do a quick wrap up on where we go from here in this journey with Travel Oregon and what's next. So quick housekeeping uh, rules, if you are comfortable to turn your camera on. Uh, like I said, we wish we could be there in person. Um, so love to see you in terms of having those really great discussions in our breakout sessions. There is the um, chat feature within Zoom. So feel free to add questions, comments, any type of dialogue um, as we'll look to uh, keep an eye on that through our breakout sessions as well as our main room. And we will be uh, transcribing all of those notes for our insights after today's co-creation lab. In terms of speaking, if you're um, not speaking, maybe, uh, we just ask you to put yourself on mute so we can mitigate any background noise. And if you like to, um, you know, participate in the discussion, please use the raise your hand feature so we can give a room for everyone to participate. Um, if you hover over your face, there's three little dots if you haven't changed your Zoom name so we can make sure we put a, a name to the face. Um, we will have a quick break. And then in terms of our ex, uh, breakout rooms, um, they will be, um, we've already sort of organized them. So you'll get a prompt each time to go to your specific room. To the main room and we'll keep moving through our agenda. And then lastly, the session will be recorded again, just to ensure that we are capturing all of the wonderful insights and discussion today. And if you have any technical difficulties, um, Emily is your go-to person, and I'm also on deck to help with any of that. So here we go. So I'm gonna turn it over to Frank and he's gonna take us on a little bit of a journey of where we are. Hi again, everybody. Um... I can speak in behalf of my team. We are thrilled to have this workshop with the people of the coast. Um, this is a regional workshop. This is number six uh, out of seven. And speaking about regions, this is the people's coast, your 363 miles stretched, 32 cities. That, that, that is a challenge. That is what we call in Europe, not exactly a region, right? Uh, I'm originally from Belgium, so if I have to drive 363 miles out in France or in Germany or in the Netherlands. So that is about scale. And like Shannon already said, we love to have this workshop physically. That's what we do. We bring always cookies and brownies and pie and coffee, and it should be entertaining and cozy. We only can try to recreate that a little bit uh, virtually and sometimes we break up with the internet you know how it is but before we start I just want to give you an insight where are we and most of all why are you here right and before I start talking I thought you from the coast so you're gonna understand this analogy right this metaphor uh, it's about boats and you know what a boat is now, everybody has his uh, favorite books or favorite thinkers. And one of mine was in the 90s, this guy is a Japanese uh, thinker, a philosopher, a professor. And, you know, Japanese people think about change more. Um, change or even disruption. They don't believe so much in disruption. And he uses that metaphor and he says, um, we in Japan, we have a lot of craftsmen and it's very hard to build a boat, a new boat. It takes time and, you know, with their thrill to seek perfection, it's not, a diff it's not an easy thing. But he says, it's much more difficult to repair a boat or a ship that is already on the ocean, that is already floating. And that is exactly what the modes and tourism businesses are in these days. That's a situation you are in. There is so much change going on, societal, like Shannon said, environmental, economical, and your business still goes on and you need to continue that. And in the meantime, you need to change. And that's what we want to talk about today. Next slide, please. So what we did is we um, partnered with and his team in February. And the first thing we did is 
we helped them a little bit with the rebuild plan, but most of all, we signed for two things. One is a transformational plan, a transformational strategy. And the second one is also a list of recommendations. How do we have to execute that? So what kind of organization should Travel Oregon be to execute all these aspirations, all these objectives and so on? Some of you will have met us already, some of you uh, won't. So what we have been doing by so far is roughly the right half of our strategic cycle, like you see here on the slide. It's all about envisioning the future. So we ask questions about what do you think the future of tourism should be for Oregon? It's a bit the ideation, the dreaming phase, and also let people talk about the many, many challenges they have. But now we go left side, left side of this strategic wheel and the questions are now much more tangible. This is not anymore what, what could you envision, this is how we get there, what do we need to do? And that's what we want to discuss together with you. So Shannon said in the beginning, um, destination think thinks about places we have a philosophy that people and you're the people's coast the resident is at the core of everything we do that already for a long long time and we were always serious about co-creating with residents not only consultation keeping in the loop uh, keep them engaged keep them informed um, and that's the only way we can think of to do this uh, in the right way because if you think about it who will give you the license to do things it's the people that live in a place what have we been doing uh, so far it's quite a thorough process so we interview of travel oregon in one-on-one -on -one interviews we interview 10 or 12 thought leaders, industry leaders, uh, CEOs of regional DMOs. We did group interviews with agencies and consultants that have a relationship with Travel Oregon. After governor conference, where I did a keynote, we had these breakout sessions. We were consulting 60, 70 people. We had an all staff survey. We did some analysis and all that was collected and gathered in a report. We call it destination assessment you are the sixth of the seven regional co-creation labs so at the end of this session i think 70 75 percent of the work will be done all the rest is writing co-writing uh, the strategy going back and forth and so on we had already also a session with the tribes. We had a session with the regional DMO leadership, a focus group more where we we had a very intense one day and a half with Travel Oregon, not only us, but also other uh, partners of Travel Oregon, other consultants. And we will uh, have sessions and that will be done by a consultants of the BIPOC community with the BIPOC community itself. That's what we're gonna bring together in your strategy. Next slide, please. Now, like I said, we wrote a report and just to give you a very, very short wrap up. Speaking about these sessions about after a government conference, overall, my impression was that people easily go in a mode of discussing the societal problems right was also the right time to do that probably people said socially uh, a lot of things are changing now what is typical for people in tourism and i really liked it is that people said we should not forget that tourism can be a very good force because tourism can add dynamics to have the eyes of other people on your place telling their experiences to the outside world and even to our own residents but and that's the last phrase here we need to tell this more to people so people spontaneously told that maybe we need to convince our own residents more and more about the value of tourism also we need to be relevant relevant not only to the people we represent meaning the industry 
uh, the tourism uh, workers, uh, people that, and it's it's in Oregon, one out of seven people work in the uh, tourism industry. So that's fantastic. But also other people we represent like local communities, right? LGBTQ communities, the tribes, the BIPOC community, the residents themselves. Economically, people say, of course, that this is a very strong force economically for Oregon. There is a yearning to tell a unified long we all tell different stories to stakeholders and residents about what this really is and we are measuring different things we are weak in our own position as tourism industry and last but not least environmentally we have the ability to be stewards of this land how because you can control how to market to whom you market and how you promote somebody said and that was somebody who was in this call by the way um travel oregon built a fantastic communication machine over the last decades and i really want to congratulate them on that but i think it's absolutely now the time to unleash that power probably communicate to other groups like our own residents to start with so these things are changing um moreover next slide please other findings and observations based on these interviews with thought leaders and the team is one, what does destination management mean if everybody is using another definition? It's, it's not only about semantics, right? A lot of people define destination management about fixing problems, problems caused by tourism. That's probably only 50% of the story um this is about cleaning up the litter and cleaning days and signage and wayfinding and fighting congestion and traffic jams and and so on and so on but it's equally also co-creating from in the beginning with vulnerable communities with your residents and keeping them in the loop and keeping them engaged so communication the true value of tourism i said enough about that but it's also adopting a win-win approach to strategy now i know that uh, jeremy is there of the travel foundation now at these days in oregon and he will talk about this this is about the three p's and it and you need to have the tree as long as you keep sending the invoice to environment or local communities you're not doing your job in the right way long-term strategy that's why we are here and there is consensus right you can't do a transformational strategy every two years at least four and probably even longer you need to tweak and change your marketing right you need to communicate to other groups maybe you also need to have new tools in place maybe you need now to know how to talk to residents and how to measure that and how to measure sentiment. Destination development is the booming heart of destination management. So this really means building experiences that are beneficiary for both your residents and your visitors, of course. Okay, next slide. We're already almost there build Oregon's brand upon its identity. This needs a little bit of explanation because I really need to congratulate say that I'm European. Years ago, I was on the coast in the United States. I had to speak somewhere and my kids absolutely. So I took my family, they wanted to see Portland. Portland is already for a long time, a very strong brand, right? But the last 10 years, I'm, I'm, I can testify that every European knows where Oregon is. They can point it on the map. Okay, you have Washington, Seattle, you have California. So you really are one of the fastest growing brands uh, of the US the last decades. But this is a consumer, or sorry, a visitor phase brand, right? Now we believe that a brand should come alive among your residents because this is a, a business of managing expectation walk your talk if you promise things and you can't deliver then you can become in dire straits so 
it should live in your residence empower stakeholders and build social license this is about becoming an enabler not doing create opportunities for others place climate action at the core of destination management i know this is a very sensitive matter and whether you like it or not climate change will not go away from the agenda the next years the wildfires will not go away uh, for the next years and all my interviews by the way with stakeholders were overshadowed by these wildfires lead by example very important you are the people of the industry so you need to give the example you need to set the example right speaking about sustainability speaking about communities become more strategic about dei also very important so as long there is a list of actions things we need to do that's fine that's great but it should really be embedded at the highest possible level which is a strategic level and last not but not least you need a new set of kpis and you need to measure this in the right place how you're going to measure sustainability how you're going to measure satisfaction of residents so that's in a nutshell things we have written who are you that's the next question so what is going to happen is we're really interested in who you are so we will be sent to breakout rooms so either you end with william uh, with myself or with Rebecca, we're going to do uh, short introductions. You tell a little bit about yourself, your organization, and then there will be three questions. And based on that questions, we're going to get to know you better. Okay, send us to the breakout rooms, please. Hey everyone. Hi everybody. Here we are. I see Erica. Hi Erica. I think we've met already, right? We have. Yes. Karen? Um, I see that Justin Optimeyer has my name up because he used my link. <laughs> okay. Please change your name before you say anything out loud, Justin. <laughs> Hi, I'm Erica. <laughs> And then I see Karen, Natalie, James, Emily, of course, Jaden, Margaret, Bloom. Do I say, Do I say that, that right? Or is it Bloomy? That's Bloom. Bloom. Bloom Bauer, very German name. Um, and Jeremy, right? Okay, so what I suggest now is we just do a quick round and i'm just going to call your name tell me who we are and what your organization is or your role or whatever you want to tell and share with us let's start with karen good morning good to see some of you again for another day in a row um i'm with the north coast tourism management network um serving from Astoria to Neskalin on the North Oregon coast. And I've been in that role for about 11 months and I'm happy to be here this morning. Okay, thank you, Karen. 11 months, doesn't seem long. Okay, next is Natalie. I'm Natalie Inouye. I'm with Traveling County. We do destination marketing and management for the Eugene Cascades and Coast region. So I'm based in Eugene, but we represent Florence on the Central Oregon coast. Yeah, I like. I'm going to Florence, by the way, but it's another one. It's in Italy. I like that name. Okay, Erica, you're next. Sure. Hi. Aqua, and we are the regional destination management organization for the entire Oregon coast, as designated by the Oregon Tourism Commission doing business as Travel Oregon. Thank you, Erica. James. Hi, I'm Jim Pino, the executive director for the Cannon Beach Chamber of Commerce, uh, the home of Haystack Rock. Thank you, James. Well, one, one of the Haystack Rocks. <laughs> The haystack rock. <laughs> I believe it's right. the smaller haystack rock, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Uh, when was the last time you touched yours? 
Okay, this is going to be a talkative group. I know that for sure. Jeremy, you started already. So who are you, Jeremy? Hi, good morning. I'm Jeremy Strober, and um, I own a boutique lodging management and consulting company called Heartfelt Hospitality Management. Um, I have the pleasure of serving on the board of ACFA with Erica and Justin. I think that's all. Uh, I serve on the North Coast Tourism Management Network with Karen and Erica again, and uh, serve on the board of our local chamber of commerce as well. I live in Pacific City, but work up and down the whole coast, and Pacific City is the home of the larger Haystack Rock. <laughs> oh my God, we're going to have a sort of competition here. Bluma. Hi, everyone. I'm with Travel Southern Oregon Coast. I do the social media management and several other uh, large projects for the for TSOC. Okay, thank you so we much. We represent to Brookings. Great. Thank you, Bluma. Um, Margaret? Margaret Pounder? Good morning, I'm Margaret Pounder. I'm with the Banded Chamber of Commerce located on the Southern Oregon Coast. And we have the famous Face truck. <laughs> right. Nobody can take that away. Then. <laughs> Justin Ockermeyer, I am the executive director of the Tillamook Area Chamber of Commerce uh, for 10 years now. Um, and I don't have any rocks right here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. You don't have any rocks. Um, Great. Did I overlook someone? Somebody who has Frank, not. Can, Frank, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, You're missing Tom, Miles, and Jaden still. Okay. I don't see them. I think Tom's unmuted. So, Tom, do you want to go first? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, please Hello. go ahead, Tom. Hi. My name is Tom Fulmer, and I am the executive director of the Waldport. Chamber of Commerce, where the forest meets the sea. <laughs> okay, thank you. Great pitch, by the way. Right, Tom. Um, who else? I don't see any. Uh, with uh, Oregon State University Extension, so Professor of Sustainable Tourism supporting the coast. Okay. Based in Coos Bay, kind of the south coast. Thank you, Miles. And there's also a Jaden Richards and Jaden Womack on the same account. I don't know if you can hear us. Okay. Hello, sorry about that. We can't, our screen isn't working today, so we can't get on, but um, we're down at for Travel Oregon Brookings Welcome Center, and that's where we are today. Sorry about that. Yeah, no worries. You're breaking up a little bit, so yeah, maybe then it's better to switch off your camera as well. But thank you for participating, Jaden and Jaden. Okay, let's start with this. We only have 20 minutes left. So first question is the easiest one. So if you want to volunteer for this one, it's just um, a suggestion because the other can be more challenging. If there's one thing I really love about the Oregon coast, it is, okay. So you can speak your south middle city you live in what is what is the thing you really love about it who wants to go first so raise your hand otherwise i will point out at people okay i don't see any hands bloom has her hand up but then natalie had her hand up okay bloom you can go first I love the natural beauty of the Oregon coast, how vastly beautiful it is from the north to the south. There's so many surprises around every corner. Okay. All right, perfect. Um, who wants to go next? Go for it, Natalie. <laughs> Frank didn't know he was going to have a co-facilitator today. Yeah. I see. yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, yeah, I can. 
Jaden, oh. Tom, and you said Natalie as well? Yeah, okay, so I would say that as somebody who lives in the valley and travels to the coast, I uh, have a slightly different experience probably, and that's that regenerative experience. So we talk about regenerative tourism and what that does for the land. I think that it it's what it also does for my soul and my heart when I am standing there on the on, at the ocean and really just kind of soaking it all in. Okay, thank you. And you mentioned the word regenerative. Absolutely, which is a very important principle in destination management. Um, so many hands now. Jaden. I think we would definitely agree with what was just said. It's just ever changing, ever evolving. We have so many trails, the Oregon Coastal Trail and the Samuel Boardman Corridor that's loaded with viewpoints and different experiences. Can't say enough beauty about the coast in all kinds of weather as most people have experienced. We're just to be able to share that with the people that come here. And I've lived in several different parts of our state. It's all gorgeous, but um, we love our area very, very much and love to impart that to our visitors. Yeah, absolutely. There is not nothing much more important than the passion of the people speaking from a tourism point of view. Justin, you raise your hand as well. Justin? Sorry, mute, gotta love it. Uh, I think up and down the coast, uh, something that always intrigues me is uh, the bounty that we're able to create um, from the coast. And as an old friend used to call it, kind of an embarrassment of riches. Okay, thank you. I think Tom, you raised your hand as well. Tom? I see your hand is up. There we go. There we go. Um, from Astoria to Brookings and being in the Central Coast, but having a home in Cannon Beach, a family home, I've seen it all. What I love is the diversity of the seafood. And, you know, at the okay. beach, at the beach, life is a little different. You know, we live by the currents, we plan by the tides, and we follow the sun. Right, thank you. Somebody else who wants to comment on this one. Uh, yeah, there are two others I see. For one reason. Let's look at Jason, Jason Holland. Good morning. I want to add uh, uh, yes to everything that's been shared so far and then add to it. Um, there's an incredibly rich arts and culture scene on the coast that impresses me. The number of artists that live and work in this area and contribute to the natural beauty that you've heard about. Um, that's very... What kind of artists are we talking about, Jason? Is it performing arts? Is it painting? Is it what is it? It's a mixture of all disciplines. It's uh, we have you know great theaters along the coast. I'm in Newport on the Central Coast, where we have a performing arts center, a visual arts center, but you have a plethora of glass blowers and ceramicists and wow. mural painters and water. I mean, you name the the discipline, and you've probably got that represented. Of course, they're drawn to the natural beauty of the area as part of the inspiration. Um, and it really adds to the beauty of the area. And can I, as a tourist, um, visit their workshops? Yes, you can visit workshops, you can observe demonstrations, you can do walking tours and artist walks and um, attend live performances to complement your, you know, while you're here, maybe whale watching, you can take in a show go to great wow. dinner, you know, it's a whole experience. One, Jeremy, you're next. It's a good thing I made a list of things because uh, many of mine have already been spoken of, but uh, definitely in agreement. And I think everything we've heard um, kind of rolls into the one word that was just used. I think Jason used it and that's inspiring. You know, I really, uh, Love how inspiring, how inspirational the Oregon coast is. 
but also I want to add um, the pace of life, uh, the, the relaxed nature. When I used to visit as a uh, vacationer, I'd call it beach time. I was getting my beach time. And that meant, you know, I took off the watch and I ate when I was hungry and I slept when I was tired and I relaxed. And I think even living here, while I don't get my beach time as much as I uh, used to when vacationing here, the relaxed, slower pace of life leads people to be more friendly, more engaging. Um, and it's, it's an enjoyable place to live. You a little bit on this, Jeremy, because I hear that all the time in the Northwest, right? I hear it in British Columbia, I hear it in Washington, and I hear it in California. Is there something that makes the coast at Oregon more distinct from these other places? What, what, are, what would you say? You know, I would say certainly distinct from the cities. Now, there are other destinations, whether it's mountains or desert, that probably have uh, their own examples of relaxed um, pace of life. Um, but the, you know, the coast and its distinction from the cities, um, it, it's unique in its um, natural beauty, which we heard in the first example. Um, but I think, to put it in perspective, I used to live in the city and come to the beach for my escape. Now I live at the beach. I go to the city for my adrenaline rush. And it's, uh, I would much rather live and spend as much time as I time uh, and go get that adrenaline rush when I want it, as opposed to needing to be forced uh, mm -hmm. to go get my escape. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. We need to go to the next question. And of course, we're going to flip it now. We're going to say, if there is one thing I would change about the Oregon coast, what is it, people? What needs to change, right? So think a moment about it, and then I'm going to call your name. All right. Erica, why don't you start? You know, I knew you were going to do that. Um, yeah. I'd also say that they joined after the introductions, but Jason Holland is with the Oregon Coast Council for the Arts. Nan Devlin is with Tillamook Coast Visitors Association. And Justin, I'm not sure how to say your last name, but I am pretty sure you're with uh, Wild Coast Goods out of Halem. Hope I got that right. So anyways, you guys can introduce yourselves and you talk about what I would change about the Oregon Coast is our public transportation. I think that we all live in very rural communities. And so... Um, it would be really helpful, I think, for the tourism side of things if we had better public transportation and also could affect the amount of like day trippers and traffic and parking, but also just for our rural communities. Um, like the Oregon coast has a lot of different demographics, but up here in Tillamook County, we have a lot of really small towns and rural areas that actually we aren't even towns, we're unincorporated. Um, and people can't get to a store to get healthy food. They can't get to work without transportation. They can't be trained. They can't go to community college without transportation. So I think that um, it's something that we really need. Okay, thank you. Good points. Miles, you raised your hand for this one. Hi, yeah. So echo a lot of what other people would say, but some of the, the needs assessment, some clear things are better affordable housing. Um, for that workforce and for even for temporary workers. One thing I'm working on is really more high-end experiences for visitors. Uh, and in particular, those things that would be small guided trips with highly professional um, guides around the things that are special for the coast, specialty foods, mushroom, you know, there's already lots of fishing, but blending in more of the experiences that people really come to understand the coast to try to, like the South Coast doesn't really have an overabundance of visitors um, like the North Coast um, seasonally, but that, that general managing expectations as we go forward. So I'd say more high-end products for people to experience along with housing. Yeah, good points. Housing is something we hear 
everywhere in the United States. So I, I'm not sure even if it's a state thing, it's more even a federal thing. Um, says, Jim, you raised your hand as well for this one. What needs to change? Um, one of the things in our community that I would love to see change is uh, more of a buy-in to the tourism and hospitality industry from our local government and our residents. That seems like we're always battling the, the resident tourism uh, fight that everything that's wrong in our community is blamed on tourism. And uh, I just wish that we could all work together to make it the best community for everybody who is here rather than visitors or residents being the separate. So trying to get everybody on board on the same page would be awesome and moving in the same direction would be great. Yeah, that's a big thing to create that um, agreement among people and, and all work in the same direction. Absolutely. Thank you. Nan, Nan, you... Nan Devlin. I am uh, right there. Okay, yes. Um, we need a, a, a greater pool of workforce, a, a bigger pool with at least 35% of the coastal population uh, retired. Um, that doesn't leave a lot of people left to, to be uh, in, in the workforce. And so, and especially in tourism, which has a reputation for being low wages, and that's not true anymore. It is also hospitality and tourism can be great training grounds for any career going forward. Um, and it makes a great lifetime career on its own. So we are, we're in desperate need of workforce. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for that one, Nan. It's, it's part of the problem also the reputation of tourism, like you're saying, people do not know to find us or? Yeah, I'm, su I'm surprised. All, all it is is flipping burgers and making beds for minimum wage, and it's not that at all. That's part of it, of course, but yeah. um, there are so many really great jobs mm -hmm management jobs uh and all we need is workforce to train okay absolutely thank you bloomer you're the last one on this one because there's another question yes bloomer what needs to change i wanted to agree with erica in, in part and say basically our infrastructure for the the entire coast we have a lot of infrastructure needs to even have more tourism visit the coast um, we don't quite have an, you know, enough hotels to expand very much. We don't have, um, we need more uh, affordable housing for the general public to work for those places. Um, more restaurants, shops, hotels, yeah. even just sidewalks and better signage to get to locations. Um, a lot of locations are sort of hidden the layman from out of the country or out of the state even can't typically find them. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. The last question. Now we go really to dive into tourism. The high value visitor, whatever that may mean for you, that's what I'm actually want to know. The high value visitor is the one who spends the most money. So for us, the best tourist is the one with the biggest bundle of US dollars. Do you agree and why? Justin, you raise your hand. I actually just can't get the thumbs up to come off in this uh, breakout room, but uh, I guess I can go. Um, the high value visitor is the one who spends the most money. I guess that is a really hard question. I don't know which angle to take on that. Um, considering, you know, it depends on how you value what how you value that visitor and what creates them to be a high value. Their valuation of what makes them high value is in money. Of course they would. Um, I think from a, I think of a high value visitor as somebody who's respectful and responsible um, and 
fits well into the um, culture of the Oregon coast. <clears throat> Natalie? I would agree with that. I also think that the high value visitor is the one who comes at the, the time of greatest need for us. One of the, in, in answer to the prior question, I would have said a year round tourism economy. And so right now, I think that most of the coast needs different visitors at different times. Okay, great point. Dispersal and then seasonally. Thank you. Karen, you raise your hand. Um, the high value visitor is the one who um, cares for the coast as if it was their own home, um, who's, who cares about um, strengthening those communities, who cares about taking care of the environment, um, and who leaves it better than they find it. Okay, thank you. I need to rush a little bit. We only have two minutes and many hands are raised. Uh, Nan, you raise your hand as well, Nan Devlin. Can't see you, but you raise your hand, Nan. Sorry, I, I, I forgot to take it down from last time. <laughs> okay, oh, no worries. Uh, like they say in Canada, Tom, you raise your hand. Yeah, I think um, everyone's points are very, very well taken. Um, I think a high value visitor um, is someone or a group of someone's that spend some time here. Um, it's not so much about how much money they spend, rather than two or three days. <clears throat> if they spend a week or two weeks, that allows them to support our local businesses and see what we have to offer and gives them a sense of why we live here and why we are promoting the Oregon coast and welcoming our visitors. Yeah, thank you. Great point, Tom. Um, it feels like you say uh, dollars do matter, but people that stay longer, actually these are indirect dollars because they are gonna become ambassadors of our place and, and they're gonna talk in a very positive way about your place. So indirectly, it brings also dollars to our place. Right. No, absolutely. Thank you. Um, okay, I think we need to go in one minute to the main room. So I'm going to leave it to this. Thank you so much. It was a really good. So you can press the button, leave room, and then you go back to the main room. Otherwise, you wait and automatically you will be sent to the room. So don't worry. We're back, Shannon. Thanks, Frank. I just uh, sent a notification to the other room, so we'll be back in a minute. Yep. All right, I think we have everyone back. Not by my team. Rebecca, are you here? <laughs>
Yes, I'm here. There you are. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Um, hope you had a good first discussion. Um, we're going to do a quick share back um, based on what we heard in each of the rooms. Um, again, if you have any sort of other notes or questions to add uh, based on uh, what you're hearing today, feel free to add it into the Zoom chat. So, uh, Rebecca, why don't you go first? Hey, happy to. Thank you. Um, so, I had a, a of all the this was the group I found to be the most proud of where they live. Um, they see the Oregon coast as the ultimate playground. Uh, the, the fact that um, the coast is very diverse uh, from a number of different respects. The fact that, um, you know, you don't have to have a ton of money to go um, and, and see and have access to all the beauty. The fact that there's so, so many things to do. Um, the coast was described uh, and, and as one person put it, what they love about it is the wild tranquility. So sometimes it's wild, sometimes it's tranquil. And so combined, there is this wild tranquility and the fact that it changes, you can um, be at the beach and, and it changes from the morning to the evening. Um, one person mentioned that they're, they've lived on the coast their whole life. They're part of a family of seven and all seven are still there. Um, a group had moved there because of the coast. Um, and uh, again, it's a playground for action 365 days a year. Uh, the fact that all beaches are public, that was very important legislation that was passed um, so that everyone again has access to it at the lush green environment. Um, and just as, as I said, that local pride is quite clear. It's a welcoming community. Um, and for the 363 miles of coastline, there are new two, no two miles the same, but they would like California to give up two of those miles so that then they can market 365 miles. Um, what they would change, um, they need more evening activities. Uh, so a more robust, um, set of things to do. Maybe that's retail operations staying open a bit later, especially when there are conference delegates in the area um, and they get out and, and need things to do. Um, protecting it, um, more consistent visitation year round, uh, beautification of the 101. The fact that there is some isolation, so uh, on the long drive, um, down uh, and not a lot of transportation options, public transit, for instance, um, and some of the smaller towns aren't very walkable. Um, so could there be a reinstituting of, of rail um, going north along the coast, a, a, a sort of more scenic route um, and increasing the presence of public safety. We need more people out, not just signs, but more people. Um, trail maintenance as well. Um, the high value visitor, uh, a lot of people talked about how it's, it's, it's more, um, less about spending money, more about um, repeat visitation, about extending length of stay, um, having people come and, and bring their friends and family again, because there is some uh, and eventually moving their business there. So I, I had asked, a little bit more about that and and I and Southern uh, Oregon there's an idea of uh, or their goal is to grow the remote worker segment um, so that's that's an important aspect um, and in that repeat visitor just the fact that they can find their happy place on the coast um, and finally to there is there is a, a, a goal though that we need to remember yield um, that yes, it's not about just a lot of spending, but that we need that spending to support small businesses, et cetera. Thank right. you. Thanks, Rebecca. Sounds like a really good discussion. And thanks team for contributing. Uh, William, what about your team? Yeah, a lot of uh, similar um, 
sentiment about what's uh, what's the love about uh, the Oregon coast. Some some other things were like lighthouses, craft beer, wild mushroom picking. For the world who come to visit uh, the coast, you know, it's it's nice to see people from all these different places and um, and adds to the vibrancy. Um, and the coast is also consists of, you know, kind, giving people. Um, when it comes to what could be better, um, being less competitive with each other, um, changing some of the regulations uh, around a bunch of stuff. Uh, for example, um, logging uh, to protect streams and, and fish habitat. Um, you know, work on bringing sea otters back. Um, work on affordable housing. Uh, so those are some of the environmental and, and social issues when it comes to tourism industry and economics. Um, family indoor activities. Um, working on um, the off season, increasing the number of uh, visitors in the winter. Um, there is a little bit of an under, undertone that, that people are in denial about the rain. Don't talk about, I feel like, but um, I would just own it. Um, you know, somebody said there are no bad days, just bad gear, which I liked, which apparently came from a Canadian. Um, high value visitors, you know, uh, I think everywhere we ask this question these days, the sentiment is the same, right? Um, that people need to really respect the place, the environment, the people, the lifestyle, but also recognizing that, that, that even um, um, that money still needs to come in as well and that even crews uh, brings in um, uh, dollars as well. Um, a real big question and a good conversation that we started was about how do you manage um, the volume of visitors when you're dealing with congestion or, or over tourism and you know traditionally if you if you work at a gated attraction you just raise prices until you know less and less people come and only the people that can afford it but that doesn't feel right to do that in a place environment so how do we manage that in a better way discussions around that. Um, when it comes to respecting the environment, um, you know, I asked, is it people that just don't know, right? The, they just don't know how to behave in certain places because they're not used to it or, or are they just disrespectful in it? Um, people felt that it was mostly on the disrespectful ladder because if you don't pick up after your dog or if you litter, um, you know, those are those are things that, that, that you should know. Um, the person that visits should, um, you know, maybe stay a little bit longer, but also fall in love with the place and become a repeat visitor, tell their friends. Um, and even though um, older people are often more affluent and, and can spend more money on, on accommodation or local restaurants and what have you, it's also a recognition that families um, maybe don't spend as much, but that could really, when you think about lifetime customer value, um, you know, a family today could be a senior um, in, in the future coming back. Uh, sort of a summary of our conversation. It's a really good, I have a really good group. I like it. Thanks, William. Yeah, sounds like a really good discussion. Uh, and thanks for contributing in that. Uh, lastly, but not least, Frank, what about your team? Hi, Shannon. I have to apologize. There is here a bunch of toddlers with a mission to tear down the hotel, so can be very noisy. Um, yeah, a lot of things um, that we have heard already, so I tr I'm going to try to be very brief. What about the love for Oregon and the Oregon coast? Of course, the things we know from other workshops, the natural beauty. Um, a lot of words like plethora, the variety, the variety of seafood, the diversity of seafood. Um, great expression, plan by the tides and follow the sun. Um, the inspiration that comes from the place. Uh, the word soul was mentioned many times. Regenerative tourism was explicit. Also what it does to the heart of the people. Um, the passion of the people, but the one I want to pick that has not been mentioned is the incredible rich arts and culture scene in the area, the mixture of all disciplines, 
people that work with glass, ceramics. Uh, you can visit the workshops. So I know what to do next time I am in Oregon. That will be my thing. Then for change, things we heard in many regions all across the state, affordable housing, of course, do something about um, work staff and especially uh, reputation. People sometimes do think they will be underpaid and that's not always true. Uh, it's a great industry. We need to do more advocacy, uh, better public transportation, um, even more high-end experiences for visitors um, and infrastructure, greater pool of workforce, which we said. But I think the thing that stood less competition, we need to do a better job to work together in one direction. And then for the high value visitor, I think there were, was a lot of agreement, like it's not only dollars, can also be indirectly people that stay longer, people that love immersion, people that are respectful and responsible, uh, people that care for the coast as if it was their own home. I like that one. Um, the people that comes at a time of greatest need for us, this is addressing dispersal, but then seasonally. Um, yeah, I think that pretty sums it up. Um, not so much about how much dollars they spent, but also about how much time they spent that will give a true value uh, for the coast. Thank you. All right. It's Where do we want to? Yeah. Yeah, I'll continue. Um, the toddlers have disappeared. They're afraid of my go right this is the next thing um and this is something we're gonna do together now you have been sent a, a video remember um i know many of you have opened that and have done their homework but again the canadian expression no worries if you haven't done that because here is your vision the vision the current vision of travel oregon now the way we think about this vision is we're very open about it uh, if you like it, please, we need to know why. Uh, if you think there should be minor tweaks, some wording, again, perfect. Let us just know what and why. But if you think this is totally off the hook, we need to have a radical change. Again, uh, why? And what are you thinking about? So... We're very open about this. All answers are very, very uh, um, uh, handy for us and, and come really uh, insight and good input. So what we're going to do, we're going to keep you together in this uh, main room. And if somebody wants to volunteer, that's great. And otherwise, I want to pick some people. But I understand you need probably some of you need to reflect on this. So who wants to comment on this? So we heard many things across the entire state about this vision. And there are quite differences from region to region. So I'm very curious what the coast thinks about this. Do you like this vision? That's okay. Do you want that this vision changes or do you want this to go? What do you think? Okay, I see a hand that was raised. Stephen, Stephen, what do you think? Stephen. Yeah, the um, while I think it's important to focus on Oregonians, it seems like uh, given your reference to the fact that Oregon is on the map, Portland for everyone. Um, and I don't know how you, I don't have a great suggestion of what you would replace that word with, but to extend beyond the borders of Oregon uh, internationally. Okay, right, great. What do you think that a better life could be? How do you interpret that, Stephen? Well, I would say I interpret that, that uh, just the 
being able to recharge in the natural beauty here on the coast and the um, activities that one can participate in and the the uh, the influence that, that has on both uh, mental and physical health okay thank you thank you for that and again there are no bad answers julie you raised your hand as well what are your thoughts hi um i so i really like this but i wanted it about the um, diversity of the explorers. I wanted it to say something like with a shared respect for our environment or I, I don't have the wording down, but um, I wanted it to, to, to emphasize that point of being like a good environmental steward or mindful of the nature in the, the area that we offer. So I, wa I just wanted a little bit more. Yeah, thank you for this point, Julie. Um... What are your thoughts about the word sustainable? Because some people will argue, yeah, but that isn't the word sustainable. Yeah, I, I, I reread that and I noticed that actually, and I thought that that, you know, is it's appropriate for sure. But, um, but I don't necessarily, I, I just wanted it to put the emphasis on the actual um, visitor or explorer. Okay, thank you. Meg, you raised your hand as well. Meg Trindler? Um, I did, thank you. Um, I would like to... So it's all Oregonians. I would like to dial it back and, and have a better life for Oregon. So not only the people that live here, but the flora and fauna as well. So more inclusive. Okay, yeah, that's a subtle one. And that addresses the three Ps, right? Planet and profit and people. Thank you for that, Meg. Um, Dave, you raise your hand a second, yes? Yes, thank you. Um, I, I was gonna mention the same thing that the last two folks have mentioned, that somehow capturing being kind to the state of Oregon when you're here visiting. Um, I, I, it does a really good job. I think it's a great vision, um, but if we could add something to you know, better taking care of the state as well. I, I like that. Yeah, absolutely. That echoes a little bit what Meg said, right? Um, and you phrase it as the state. Okay, good points again. Karen, Karen, you raised your hand as well. Yeah, something that I just learned, language of explorer as a word for visitors, is that sometimes that's has negative connotations um, in indigenous communities because it has a colonial connection. So I'm not sure what I would recommend as a different word, but that was something that was new information for me this week. Yeah, I need to give you some feedback here. We did already um, a similar a workshop with the tribes and they all agreed about one thing. They of course, they do discuss a lot and they don't agree about everything, but they agree that the word explorer will be interpreted as offensively by many of their communities. So it's a very loaded word for them. So that's good feedback. Thank you, Karen. Justin, you raised your hand as well. Yeah, um, I was just gonna echo what Karen was saying. It seems a little bit, um, Explorer kind of gives the same connotation of like ex exploit. So I feel as though something more like an old school term that people that are coming here, they are visitors. I think that kind of gives a little bit of a, that you should respect where you're visiting. Kind of, so that's all. Yeah, absolutely. I, I was not there when it was created, but I think they wanted to say something about what kind of visitor, an active visitor, somebody who's curious about a place. But yeah, yeah that, may, that makes sense, and, but maybe yeah, just a, a different word. Yeah, absolutely. I need to reiterate what I said to uh, Karen. Um, Erica. Yeah, uh, not on the Explorer topic, although I agree with Justin and Karen. Um, but I think that a lot of destination management solutions are long-term solutions, and they're not ones that we're going to win after a one-year or two-year plan. And I know that all of our budgets are usually one-year budgets, and as an RDMO, we have a two-year plan. 
but a lot of solutions like what are we going to do with climate action? How are we going to like public transportation, workforce housing? Those are that takes a long time. We're often focused on one year or two year projects that we can say, OK, this is our goal and we did it. And that was low hanging fruit. Um, but really looking at the future of tourism and the future of the types of projects that we're working on. And I, and I just feel like this is um, more of a short term like vision, like this is something we could say, yeah, we did it this year. Uh, we did it this year. Um, but looking at what does this look like in five years? What does this look like in 10 years? Um, and start really shifting tourism so that we're looking at the long term impacts of our of our marketing and our investments for the um, for Oregon. Great points, Erica. Would you go so far to include a sort of timeline in your vision? That's what some visions do, right? Bill Gates said, in five years, I want to have a personal computer in every family. Um, is that a way to go? Like, say, in five years, in 10 years, we want to be there? Yeah, I mean, that'd be great. I think for us in the industry for planning, I know vision statements are supposed to be inspirational. And so, I, you know, I don't know, like the marketing side um how, how that works but yeah it would be interesting to have that that timeline or at least to position yourself to say hey we're looking at the sustainability of us as businesses as an industry now but also yeah in 10 years and what this looks like for future generations of oregonians that want to start businesses and start families and live here in our communities okay thank you erica for that bluma you're next uh, I just wanted to add on, I think it was Meg that was talking about um, wanting to add something about the visitors being um, sustainable, um, treating our Oregon coast kindly. But I wanted to say that when you mentioned the word sustainable, it does appear to apply to the Oregonians, not to the visitors. And so that was my qualm with the statement is that um, we want to all be sustainable, not just the Oregonians, but also our visitors. Yeah, absolutely. And that feels now like Oregonians should be sustainable, or at least it can be interpreted that way. Okay, thank you, Tom. Tom, you raise your hand as well. Yeah, it's, um, I find it difficult to create a vision statement with one it sentence. Is. Can you hear me okay? Perfect. Okay. Um, you know, the three things that jump out at me are the terms better, strong, and sustainable. What does that really mean? And I agree with the diversity of explorers going away. What is missing, I think, as a lifelong Oregonian, is that this is not speaking to the residents. This is not speaking to people that live in Oregon. And staycations and in-person travel is critical. And there are many Oregonians who have never explored their own state, sometimes their own county. We have to include that Oregon and travel Oregon is all about the people who live here as much as the people who visit here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree with the last one. Hey, no, this is great input. Thank you for that, Tom. Um, you say, what does it mean, sustainable, better? And the third was diversity, I think. These are good points. Would you go so far, Tom, like when I replace Oregonians by Californians or Coloradans that it's still valuable that it is too vague for you is that what you want to say yeah to to a large extent it is a little vague you could <laughs> you could plug this vision statement into um, a variety of states provinces um, around the world frankly and um, some things and I, and I can't I can't really explain what I believe it's missing but I think the strong thing because we all deal with um, residents and we all deal with businesses and we all and I, I don't mean that negatively 
but we're not including the people that live here that are natives that have moved here at least in this vision statement i don't believe i think we're we're forgetting um, the fact that there is so much opportunity i challenge anyone that lives in oregon even a native if they have ever been to burns or baker or lakeview um, i'll bet you the answers are probably not or even crater lake um, there's so many people that live here so many people that have moved here that haven't even explored our own state let alone the coast I'll, I'll leave it at that yeah thank you thank you for that tom good point jeremy you raise your hand and then we're gonna wrap it up i think and have a break right shannon yeah okay no jeremy one's... you're lost so i want to put some pressure on you <laughs> ah, thank you frank um there's a lot that i like about this this statement and uh, one of the things that i thought of when i was uh, listening to tom speak i i, I do like um the better life for all oregonians because I think that that is missed quite often when we focus on welcoming visitors or how to um, improve tourism and the visitor experience. Uh, many residents forget that a, a thriving, robust tourism economy is good for residents. It's good for all Oregonians. And so I like leading with that. It's uh, to me, it's impactful that tourism If all we're doing is focusing on making it better for visitors, then why do it, right? Um, but I, all, I wanted to share that as I look at this and listen to everybody speak, and I, I like a lot of the comments that were made, I find myself focusing on welcome. And welcome is the word that I'm questioning the most. And maybe we need that to be broad and general, but I feel like I want to dive into that more. You know, what does that mean when we create a strong, sustainable local community that welcomes a diversity of explorers? I really want to see that speak to integrating the visitor into the vibrancy of the community, uh, sharing the uh, what is unique about our community with that visitor. And maybe that does need to be all wrapped up into welcome, but I'm, I'm trying to find a better way to um, get that meaning across, that deeper meaning. No. And it's all noted. And the way you're saying welcome, it, it's more about intensity, right? Welcome, it's probably scratching the surface and you want to have more integration and engagement in the communities. So thank you for that. Yeah. Edward, can you... I see you raised your hand as well. Can you be very brief? Because yeah, I'll, I'll be very brief, and this this yeah. may not have any any uh, part of the, uh, the vision statement. But almost everyone I've met here in Lincoln City uh, isn't originally from here. They discovered Lincoln City by being a visitor and then became a resident. That seems to be accelerating as more and more people can work from home and aren't tied to a physical office somewhere. Um, is, is there a way to imply in this somewhere, and maybe it's already in there, that tourism is also a sampling mechanism and uh, we end up oftentimes with uh, upscale new residents courtesy of people being introduced via tourism? I like that expression, tourism as a sampling mechanism. I may steal it someday. <laughs> Okay, no, all good points and all noted. For those people who really want to comment on this vision, and you are very engaged in this, uh, award for this workshop for the best input for the vision, um, you can still use the chat. It's really on fire now. Shannon, how long do we have for a break? We'll have 10 minutes. So if you want to come back at 10.35, we'll keep moving through uh, the next um, exercise. So 10.35, uh, come on back. Thanks, everybody.